All right, guys, next let's talk about revolvers. <clears throat> and I really should have one here to demonstrate with each of these, but I don't. All right, understanding revolvers. So big difference here, guys, is that cylinder. This is the old school Western style, put them up, draw, tombstone, you know, Doc Holliday, uh, Val Kilmer type of weapon. And, and you see it right here. And this is a video of a 357 Magnum, slow speed, just like we did with the striker or with a single action handgun earlier. So uh, watch what happens here. Pulls the trigger, bam. You can see how the cylinder rotates. Actually you can't because it rotates and then it already starts to fire. Notice the grip on this. Grip is always a lot more difficult for the revolvers it seems like. Um, you know, older gentlemen, older women usually prefer revolvers because of their simplicity. You, you're going to get five to, I think, like seven or eight shots off, depending upon the caliber. This is a 357 Magnum, so you're probably going to get six shots. I would never recommend a 357 Magnum for concealed carry. That is a super strong gun, um, way too strong. Uh, you know, know your target, consider the foreground and background, and you are just blasting through. That's how big of a gun that is. So anyways, that's a revolver. Uh, what action was this revolver in, or at least appeared to be in, once this video began? Well, it appears to be in single action, um, but I don't know. It shoots, and then it appears as if, though, this could also be fired in double action. So, And, and we didn't see the cylinder turn. You'll usually see the cylinder turn as you're pulling that trigger. So that's what leads me to believe this is actually a double action revolver, uh, but it was just caught and began in the frame of a single action revolver. So just remember that the action is relative to the number of movements the hammer makes with the trigger pull. Single action, one movement forward, less trigger pull required. One movement, single action, uh, think of condition one. When it comes to uh, double action, one, two, with that trigger pull, much heavier trigger uh, pressure required. Uh, you're looking at like a 12 pound trigger there versus uh, about a three pound trigger. And um, two movements, one, two, to where that gun goes off, it cocks back, point of release, moves forward on one trigger pull. And uh, that's where you get those double action movements from. Um, when it comes to a revolver and weapons conditions, think of it this way, cylinder out, no rounds inserted, that's condition four. Uh, cylinder out, rounds inserted, that is condition three. And then uh, uh, rounds in, or cylinder closed, rounds in. And, um, you know, if it is hammer forward, condition two, and then if it's hammer backward, it's condition one. And then kind of a weird one is if you ever decide to pop the cylinder out and if there's six you know, areas for ammunition, you put five in there, sometimes people will do this where the first rotation and click is actually an empty uh, part of the cylinder. And so you have to really pull the trigger twice. It's kind of like a safety thing. Like, oh, if the gun accidentally got triggered, uh, it's at least going to go on to a empty part of the cylinder. Uh, I don't know why you would be carrying a weapon loosely in your bag or purse or pocket to begin with, but um, that's what some people do. They think that, you know, doing it, carrying it with only one round missing is the way to do it. I don't agree with that. Um, I think just that's a dangerous mindset. Uh, but anyways, so those are the weapons conditions for um, for a revolver. If they do carry it like that, uh, I usually say that you know it's it's still in condition two or condition one, whatever it is. Uh, I don't like to play that game. It's like saying that I'm gonna load a magazine and put one dummy round in there to start off with. I mean, it's still a condition one weapon if you ask me. So, all right. Anyways, moving on. Double action, single action revolvers, as we already discussed with the other weapon systems. Uh, here's just different ways that that gets explained to you, uh, if my way did not make any sense. And then going back into the nomenclature grip, notice how small the grip is. You're going to have a difficult time getting a very solid grip on that. A lot of these are fired single-handedly at close distance, uh, or at least in theory they are. You have the cylinder release. This you're going to push like forward with your thumb. So you see how this is grooved here. You rest your thumb right on that and then you just push forward. 
uh, and then it goes forward, pops the cylinder out. The ejector rod is what you'll push back on in order to empty the shell casings uh, from the cylinder. And then the rear sight often gets overlooked on a lot of these revolvers because it's like grooved into the metal frame. It doesn't stick out like the rear sights do on a standard uh, striker fired handgun, for example. These are like etched into the frame itself, not a separate entity. And so people will aim often just looking at the front sight and not actually lining it up in there. And so I've seen people, a lot of people end up shooting very, very high because they're basically just looking over the front of that front sight tip and they're not properly dipping the barrel of that gun downwards in order to line it up with these rear sights. So just a couple of things to keep in mind and consider when it comes to revolvers. Um, in theory, they're really reliable. I don't have too much experience with revolvers. I don't know why I would carry one. I don't feel comfortable carrying one. I feel comfortable enough carrying a magazine fed weapon uh, that, you know, that's what I would roll with. Um, but I'm sure there's a situation or somebody out there really does do better with these. Um, you have double action only revolver, so kind of like with the striker fired or with the, uh, you know, internal hammer fired weapon system basically it's it's just hidden and so this can be fired from double action only anytime you see a revolver like this it is automatically double action all right so now we're going to watch a small video on how these different weapon systems function so here you have a single action revolver this is literally the old school epitome of a western gun you're only going to get one shot you have to pop the cylinder out load a single shot and uh, it only fires after cocking that hammer back to the rear single action. Or yeah, not that you're gonna get one shot and you have to load each individual round one at a time and each part of, part of the cylinder. All right, semi-automatic. This has two safeties, a grip safety and a manual flip safety or a thumb safety a lot of different weapons out there these days. In theory, this slide would have already gotten charged to the rear, locking that hammer to the rear. So it would have done this to lock that hammer back. And then as we split it open, you know, the firing pin, that's what's gonna initiate the round and the bullet and the whole process. And so as you pull that trigger, in this case, the hammer gets released, smacks the back of that firing pin and then that gaseous exchange takes place, pushes backwards on that slide, recocking it to a single action weapon. Here you have a more modern style a revolver with an external hammer on it. Most of these types are either that enclosed double action only or can be fired double or single action. See as the trigger goes back, the hammer goes back and it's the same process except the only difference now is that there's no ejection uh, the shell or the cylinder does turn with each trigger pull going back to that one slide we looked at when we started all right here you have double action uh, external hammer fired weapon system you have that external hammer and the safety decocker remember Decockers are not always going to be the safety, and the safety is not always a decocker on these double action handguns. This looks like a Beretta M9 style. Pretty common in the military uh, for the standard ranks. Look, internal safety, firing pins. So, the, some of these weapon systems, especially striker fire, come with uh, a variety of mechanical safeties inside of the weapon. You won't notice them, just the outside grip safety the trigger safeties in this case the grip and the thumb safety all right now here's a striker fire this looks like a glock 17 very common uh, with police forces all over the place uh, socom uses a glock 19 shorter variant of this striker operated uh, firing pin the recoil spring a couple of the main components you can see the magazine lodged in there and, and now that slide is, is coming to the rear. Notice how that trigger gets pulled and it just releases the striker forward. This slide comes to the rear because when that firing pin strikes that primer on the back of that round, uh, 
What that's going to do is create ignition of that gunpowder, that propellant, and it's going to create heat and gaseous expansion. The majority of that gas escapes out the front of the barrel, following behind the bullet, giving that bullet velocity. And then the rest, the residual, follows the path of least resistance and ends up um, going, uh, pushing back on that slide. So making the slide go like this because that spring can't withstand that force. And so it goes under tension. Um, all right. I think that's a lot for, for this little module right here. Uh, next, we're going to be talking about magazines and um, what you need to know about them. So see you there.